What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online, and today we're checking out the new update, which features a couple new parts, nothing too crazy, but we do have a telegraph office as well as a 45 degree cross piece. Now you'll notice Heist isn't here today, I just want to do a quick video to look at the update. Now apparently this update came out a few days ago, and the reason why we're late is because Heist and I actually record a lot of our series ahead of time, so we're actually like way ahead on the updates, and uh, yeah, we're ahead on the episode so this is actually kind of like out of order don't worry about it it'll all make sense but anyway we're gonna build some telegraph offices because apparently they are a fast travel location so you can see we've got a wonderful telegraph office um i can hear it beeping i'm not exactly sure where to put it i guess we'll just slap her down like something like this next to the track perfect can i go in oh i can look at that Oh, and that even opens too. That's awesome. I can't I can't sit in the chair though. Can I open the window? I can't open the window either. That's wicked. Interesting. Well, there's a telegraph machine. It's it's beeping. Uh and that's pretty much it. Now, apparently this means if we go onto the map, now we've got a little icon here and I can click on this icon. Oh, and it warps me right into the office. That's awesome. Now, you don't have to lay telegraph lines, unfortunately, which I thought would have been super cool if we had to actually attach the lines all to each other but we're gonna basically get on the train drive around the track and set one of these up at every one of the industries we have connected so far which will also make things a lot easier when we have other people on the server and we're trying to you know do multiplayer sessions people can just warp to the location they need to be at and uh, it'll be good to go we're actually gonna move this back a little bit further from the rails just so that you know we don't accidentally hit it with a train although we really shouldn't and apparently we can just place these wherever we want. So there we go. Put that there. Perfect. That's great. Let's go get one of our engines. Now, interestingly enough, I was looking up some telegraph stuff. Because I was like, you know, there's got to be some history about it that's cool. And I didn't even know. But the telegraph it came kind of hand in hand with the railway. Apparently, the, uh, you know, when, when countries were laying railways out it was just easy to put telegraph lines right next to the railway and of course that you know sort of obsoleted the whole pony express thing uh pretty much right away as soon as you had telegraph lines you had pretty much instant communication from you know extremely long distances but what i didn't know which was kind of cool is that before the telegraph there was apparently something called a semaphore and i hope i said that right and apparently it was basically a series of hand signals they would have these like stations set up like towers and they'd have these flags that you could put in different directions on these towers and essentially you would you know pick a pick a flag position and that would determine the letter and of course the big problem with this is people had to use little telescopes to actually look and see what flags were being raised where but uh, apparently they used it as an early form of communication prior to telegraph and the Morse code signals. So that's kind of interesting. That's about the only cool fact I have that I looked up. I didn't know there was such a precursor to the telegraph. Yeah, but apparently the electric telegraph came along sometime in the 1800s, early 1800s. Morse code, same time. And, uh, you know, just wonderful stuff. Then fast and light communication. And then apparently in the early, like, late 1800s, early 1900s, something like that. Then railways started replacing telegraph with three-line communication systems, um, which I, I, I imagine that was for phone. I don't know when phone came in. 18-something? Eight, late 1800s maybe was the first phone voice call? I'm not actually sure, to be honest, but either way, cool stuff. I kind of wish we had to connect up telegraph lines, but we'll go put a bunch of stations around the map, and then hopefully we'll be able to warp places. I probably should run there, because then I could just warp back, rather than have to take Betsy back. We're also gonna put one down at the helper station as well, where we've got that, uh, you know, that 060, and that way we can use the helper station as a place for people to spawn, and just go, you know, get the helper, do what you need to do. So I think this is a really good feature, to be honest, with the telegraph stations, and oh yeah, we've got the 45 cross pieces. Might as well check that out while we're going here. So... Crossover 45. That's that's pretty much it. That would have helped a lot when I was making the uh, sawmill layout. Definitely. Because 90 degree crosses required us to do, uh, you know, some relatively large loops. But either way, I'm not going to go back and change it now. But a cool feature to have. I really wish there was just crossover, like, flexible angles. You know, like you could just overlap two pieces. I understand why that would be very difficult. Because um, it would have to automatically put, like, the gaps in the tracks where the tracks overlap but it would be really cool if i could just overlap track at any angle because uh you know that would be that would be the thing 
But anyway, let's get out of here. Let's head on to the next location. Probably the sawmill first. So I have a, a fact sheet about telegraph and uh, Morse code right up on my other monitor as I'm driving through the trains here. Just because it's always nice to educate yourself. And apparently the telegraph back in 1844, Morse sent the first historic message, which was what hath God wrought, which was an interesting, interesting choice. Um, you know, I can't remember what the first telephone message was from Alexander Graham Bell. I think it was something along the lines of, you free for dinner tomorrow night. Um, but anyway, needless to say, pretty cool stuff. And then apparently in 1874, uh, Mr. Thomas Edison came along and invented the quadruplex system, which allows for four messages to be transmitted simultaneously through the same wire, which is kind of cool. It's kind of a little bit like if you think of internet and packets, although I don't really know how he did it back in the day, but if you think of modern internet and packets, a bunch of data gets compiled into a series of packets, which all gets sent at the same time, and then there's a confirmation signal that comes back to confirm that, oh god, I got a break here, yeah, yeah, no, I overshot, I guess, you know what, let's just go down this way first, doesn't matter, we gotta go to all the places anyway at some point but yeah so the internet sends a bunch of packets it compiles a bunch of data together in a switch it sends it all out as one packet it asks for a receiving packet from the other end confirms that the message has been received sends the next packet continue to repeat the process and internet kind of it's kind of like a one-way communication um you know it, it it goes one way and then comes back the other way and vice versa and keeps repeating that process and, it, I mean, that's obviously the most simplified version of it I could possibly explain. But it is sending, you know, multiple layers of information each time it sends something. It's kind of cool. So it's just interesting that Thomas Edison figured out a way to do that with telegraphs. All right, apparently also, interestingly enough, by 1940, there were 40 telegraph lines that went across the ocean, which is uh, interesting, laid across the Atlantic Ocean. So they just dropped it in the water, I guess, with, uh, you know, with chipped. And interestingly enough, apparently Western Union still had a telegram service. Now, a telegram is a little bit different from a telegraph, obviously. Hand-delivered telegram would be, uh, you know, a message that gets received, I guess, by telegraph and then hand-delivered to your house the rest of the distance because you didn't have telegraph lines going to your house. It would be from one station to another, and then, you know, some guy would have to hand deliver the message from that station to your house. Apparently, Western Union ran its telegraph service until 2006. That is ridiculous. So up till 2006, I could have gotten someone to hand deliver a telegram to someone's house. I'm assuming that's in the US, but that is actually kind of ridiculous. But anyway, that's the end of my uh, facts on telegrams. It's just, that's all I got on, on this particular fact sheet. I literally did not know any of this stuff. It's kind of hilarious. I wonder how much Heist knows. Next time we get into a video, uh, we'll obviously have the telegraph offices. I'm going to have to bug Heist and see how much telegram knowledge he actually has. Because it really was an essential part of the railroad. If you think about it, um, you know, the biggest thing I'm reading is that telegrams helped have a, a method of trans a, a method of communication that was faster than the method of transportation and that's sort of a, a really big feature if you think about it being able to send messages before the train arrives or being able to send messages about the train arriving updating schedules things like that that really allows you to improve the efficiency and the density of railroads right when everything's stuck on a schedule and the only way to get a new schedule to people is by like you know a horse and pony um it's, it's a lot more difficult to sort of you know, adjust things, I guess. But when you have a telegram, you can instantly send a message like, hey, this train's running late, you know, we're gonna be updating it with this, blah, blah, blah. That, that's pretty effective communication. All right, so we're just gonna keep cruising right on through the smelter. To be honest, I can probably just drop Betsy here. Let's jump off. We'll pick up, Betsy's gonna come back around this main line. Um, so let's put another telegram office over here. We're eventually gonna have a giant, um, uh, thingy here. What's what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, engine shed. That's the word. Perfect. So we'll put a telegram office like right here. Something like this. Just a little bit further away so we don't get in the way too much. Want to try and keep it like parallel to the line a little bit. There we go. Something like that. Perfect. Done. Can always move that later. So now if we go to the map, we've got one here, one here. That's awesome. Can telegram between them. There comes Betsy. Perfect. Go pick her up. I kind of wish I could change the icon color. They're a little bit big. Um, you know, they kind of like ruin the text, but that's okay. They're, this one's a little bit better because it's further away from the text, but now I can click here. 
Freight Depot instantly. That's so good. And then I can click here. Smelter instantly. Did I just... Oh, okay. It was the wood. I thought my guy was picking up a wood plank. All right. And here's Betsy. Perfect. Let's uh, hop on board. I don't... Oh, we're going to make it. We'll be fine. All right. So that's actually the extent of my Telegram knowledge. Uh, brought to you by the uh, History Channel. I don't know. History.com. I looked it up. Some American History website. Looks wonderful. Of course, let me know what you guys think in, in the comments down below if you've got some Telegram knowledge. I know there's a lot of, like, hardcore train people who uh, follow the series with Heist, and they always love Heist's educational stuff. I'm not really the most historic person. I don't have all the, uh, you know, the data that Heist does. Heist really knows all the stuff. But, uh, yeah, if you got any other cool facts about telegrams, I know, I do know that they use glass caps. So modern, um, if you look at modern, like, phone lines, modern power lines, and stuff like that, if you look at, there's those, like, weird-looking coil things that connect every wire to a tower, and those are actually, like, big ceramic insulators, and they use that to prevent the power from, you know, interfering with the tower and the signal from getting messed up and all sorts of stuff. And I know in telegrams back in the day, they used to use glass caps and i know that because i i found a bunch back in the day when i was a kid we used to go to like shunt yards and stuff um to watch trains and one of the things we had found was some of these old glass um telegram telegraph caps and they were just these like little glass dome things that would basically sit on top of the pole and then you'd wrap a wire around it and it would act like enough of an insulator to prevent the wire from grounding out through the pole, which was just kind of cool. So I did I did have some of those back in the day, as well as like an old brake hose and some things like that. We used to go to the, the shunt yards and just find all these old scrap train parts and kind of, you know, collect them as souvenirs. It was kind of cool. It was really cool stuff. All right, pulling into the Valley of Doom. I like the fact that you can't tell what monstrosity awaits you until you come around this corner. And then as soon as you come around this corner, you're like, oh, what a beautiful valley. Oh my god, look at the bridges. You just got bridge, bridge, bridge. It's kind of, it's kind of amazing. But anyway, we're going to pull in here. Uh, we'll just turn this off for a sec. Guess we got to figure out where to put a telegram office here. Probably over by the round table, I would imagine. Probably got more space there on that foundation that we've got. Here we go. Perfect. I really wish the game added a smooth foundation piece. Um, you know, something that just doesn't have the, the drop-off ridges. The smoother foundation definitely looks a lot better now in terms of, uh, you know, just overall functionality or whatever with the track. But uh, the old foundation was definitely nice in terms of uh, the ability to actually make stuff look smooth and like it was just a big chunk of ground fill there we go let's put that there that looks all right perfect it's got a look look at that look at that that would be a ground wire post i would imagine a giant post that goes down and provides the ground and then i don't know where these would get power from we just we don't actually have power for them yeah these these are the glass caps i'm talking about those little shiny things that would be a glass cap and you can see it's got like a little ridge in it, and the wire would be attached to it um, by wrapping it around it as far as I knew. It would like go, oh, maybe these ones, those ones kind of have it modeled. You can see there's like a little groove there, and I'm pretty sure the wire went up, went around, and then kept going. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, I'm sure someone could correct me in the comments. But yeah, those were little glass caps, and now we use these big monstrous ceramic insulators on everything. Uh, mainly because like, I think the amount of power and everything has just gone up like crazy. Where did my engine go? Oh, it's way over there. Wow, okay. Alright. The interesting thing about these bridges is that they're all 6.5% laid, but just like before, I'm pretty sure that means we're actually steeper than 6.5% on the inside angle. Because I don't really know how the game calculates this, right? Because, technically speaking, the percentage grade is the amount of height over the amount of distance, right? So if you go up 1 foot over 10 feet, that's 10%, right? But... When you're going up on a corner, technically speaking, the inside track is a shorter distance than the outside track, right? If you look at a, a curve and you increase the radius, then it means that the, the distance that you have to travel, the circumference, also increases. So, in this case, our inside track is actually going to be going steeper than the outside track, and the outside track will be slightly shallower just because it's got a longer distance to travel, but they're going up the same elevation. So, I don't know if the game, when you lay a curve... I'm assuming it's probably some middle point in the middle of the track, so it would be 6.5% exactly in the middle of the two tracks, and then it would be like, you know, maybe up to 6.6, 6.7 on the inside, and 
6.3 on the outside. I'm not exactly sure, but it definitely wouldn't be perfectly flat. It's just something to think about. Um, so anyway, long, long story short, that's that's my that's my thought on that. Uh, I think we got to put the telegram office here. I really wanted to put an engine shed up here at some point, but I feel like it's just too big. Like, even if I put an engine shed here, I'm going to be into the mountain, am I? Oh, no, we're actually not. Look at that. Well, you could put an engine shed right there. Well, that's interesting. But then there's no room for the switch off for that. Like, you would need... we need switches that are much shallower. Like, I could put a switch here. But then I wouldn't be able to switch into both of those. Like, this is, this would be all too cramped. Wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, let's just put a telegram here. We don't really need an engine shed here because there's a helper station. So, your whatever road engine you come up with is gonna, you know, load and do your loading and unloading and all that. Um... I mean, I guess it would depend. Or I guess you could put an engine shed way over there on this edge. Yeah, that's future plans anyway. We don't really have engines right now, to be honest, to manage the iron mine. It would be cool to have somebody who could manage the iron mine, you know, load and unload the cargo. A road train shows up, picks it up. But the iron mine is also an interesting industry because the way we have it set up here, we don't exactly have room, um, you know, to do all sorts of all sorts of crazy stuff. Actually, we can put the telegraph office right here. This is a nice spot. But yeah, we don't have a lot of room to, like, have a runaround track. I mean, we've got this one runaround track, and that's it. But it's it's a very cramped industry, so it might not be that uh, that good to stage stuff here. We just might not have room for the staging. Anyway, here we go. We'll put this, like, I don't know, something like that. Perfect. Another telegram office. Love it. Amazing. I kind of wish I could change the color from, you know, the red, but perfect. So we got one here. We got one down at the helper station. So we can just spawn in here. That's so sick. And then we can spawn up here. Kind of completely destroys the iron ore mine text, but whatever. That's okay. We know where we are. Awesome. Now let's head back down, and we got to put one at the sawmill and one at the logging camp, and then we're good to go. All right, finally back. Turns out that's a that is a long run from the iron mine. Just full steam in reverse. It, uh, that's a that is a time consuming run. It'd be really nice when they don't have speed limits anymore, because those runs are relatively flat with smooth curves, and uh, we'll be able to really just hammer it and go like you know 20, 30 mile an hour. That'll make the trip half as long easily. Like that's a good good five, ten minutes of just riding. I kind of feel like this switch should be on the other side. I get confused trying to tell which one is which sometimes. Like, when you're coming at it quick especially, you can't tell which one belongs to which track. But if I have this flipped over the other way, um, like so, then now you can easily tell, you know, obviously the first one is for the first track, the second one's for the second track. It's not... I feel like you wouldn't do this in real life. But for my own brain, that actually makes more sense. And then we'll put down some more telegraph offices. We got two left. I don't really know where to put this one here. I guess we can just put it out back in behind the sawmill there. There's this giant empty field here we're never going to use. Um, you know, I mean, it's good field. We could, I guess, put a switch off here and have some, like, shunt lanes. But really, the sawmill industry for us is sort of like a through-and-through -through industry. You just pick up your stuff and go. You don't really have to, uh, you know, wait around or anything. We can actually put it right here as well. There's something, something in here. I don't know. Let's just line this up with this platform a bit. Perfect. Throw it right here. Done. Alright. Nice little telegram office. I'm gonna actually... I don't know. Do I... Do I, it, Nothing ever gets put here. In the industry. So I guess that's fine. Kind of right... No, no. It's actually not anywhere near the text. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Whatever. There's tons of space, honestly, at this industry. You could put some really... This would be really cool for shunt lanes. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's keep going. All the way to the logging camp. And then that'll be the last telegram office, which will be perfect. And then we'll have teleportation around the whole map, at least to the industry to be connected, which is super, super convenient. It'll be really nice when we have uh, more people, too. And, like, for example, if you got to go run helper engines, well, there's already engines there. So you can just, you know, telegram, you know, telegraph yourself. I keep wanting to say teleport, but it's telegraph. So we're, you know, you telegraph yourself to the location, grab the engine, do your job. Once we'll have an engine at the smelter, it'll be the same thing. Get the smelter set up as an industry. Probably should have, you know, an engine at the logging camp and maybe some shunt lanes at the logging camp so people could assemble log trains. Although the logging camp is kind of like the sawmill in the sense that you just go there, you pick up your load, you drop it off, 
and then you keep everything stored at the freight depot because these are so close together we kind of just have them set up as two loops which i think honestly for the sake of how this game plays that kind of makes sense if you're at the logging camp you're picking up raw materials and then you're gone right away the only time it would make sense to have a shunt yard here is if we had so many cars someone could just fill up rows of full cars and then people could you know come by grab the full cars they need and leave all right perfect made it to the logging camp don't really need to go through the whole loop or anything uh and here i think we can just whoops walked out the wrong way i think we can just put it next to this office here nice little couple set of buildings on the right here just put a little telegram office perfect let's just line that oh that was interesting it, like snapped to it almost interesting all right, let's just slide this up. This is why I wish you could color these, because I would totally make this one, like, brown or something, you know, so that it kind of makes more sense with the logging camp. But that is horribly off. Uh, I would like that to be straight, please. I also wish you could snap these buildings to the grid. Buildings are always free-placed in this game, but we have this wonderful grid system for track now, and I'd love to be able to align buildings to the grid. Um, not because it really matters, but just because... I like having things aligned to the grid. There we go. Good enough. That's close enough. The buildings here aren't even straight to each other, to be honest. Neither are any of these. But there we go. So now we've got a logging camp telegram station. We can go to the uh, telegraph. I keep saying telegram, but I guess it would be telegraph, and then it would be a guy on a horse running it to your house. So there we go. We'll go to the smelter instantly. It's kind of weird that it always spawns you inside the house, but that's okay. Perfect. Uh, we can go to the helper station. Oh, this is so cool. It's unbelievable how fast you can get to these places. And then the iron mine. Perfect. All is peaceful. And then back to the freight depot. Awesome. I left Betsy at the logging camp. Gotta go, gotta go pick up Betsy. Alright, perfect. Well, let's head back to the freight depot. Awesome. Wonderful. So cool. That is, that is a wicked, wicked feature. You can teleport now. That's especially, not so much in single player. I mean, in single player, usually you're grabbing the station. You know, you grab the train you need from the freight depot, and then you go to the station you need to go to. Uh, but in multiplayer, that's a that's going to be a huge help. So, anyway, we're going to head back to the uh, freight depot. Hopefully not run out of fuel on the way there. Really need to fill up Betsy with wood. She's, uh, she's getting a little empty. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. We're just going to head on back and park this train and save up for heist the next episode actually that we recorded is not going to have the telegram offices because now i'm sort of out of order but i really wanted to get these set up before the next time heist and i record um so the next episode we still don't have the telegram offices which is unfortunate or telegraph offices i'm gonna keep saying that wrong i'm sorry but yeah we don't have the telegraph offices um yeah, it, it, it's kind of out of order now. But it's okay. The episode after that, we'll have the offices and we'll be warping around. And now if Heist's game crashes, he'll just be able to warp back and good to go. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.